Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. What's that? You're running out of tracks in GarageBand iOS. That is a serious problem. We have 32 tracks, but when you get creating, you can use up those tracks really quickly. So in today's GarageBand Quick Jam, I'm going to show you how to use the merge function to free up some additional tracks, merge together some of your current tracks. Let's go. Okay, so let's check out the very cool merge function here in GarageBand iOS. Now, what types of tracks are good for merging? Things like drums that we have here, things like percussion and backing vocals are really good candidates for merging and we'll explain why as we go along. Now, before we get started with merging, it's always a good idea to back up your track. So do a duplicate of your track just so that you've got an original version before you start merging. GarageBand will duplicate the track for you, but it never hurts to have an extra backup. And one more thing before we get started, why would you use the merge function? Well, here in GarageBand iOS, you have 32 tracks, which sounds like a lot until you start creating tracks. So if you are running low on tracks, you can combine multiple tracks into one audio track to free up some room and create more tracks. To access the merge function, we tap right here on the icon of a track, and you can see this fourth option along here is merge. In some versions or languages, it's called combine, but what it does is it merges, combines together multiple tracks into one stereo audio recorder track. And it's important to understand that that new track is an audio recorder track, which means these MIDI tracks that we have here will no longer be editable. It will just be a waveform. So if you need to do edits to the actual notes or the track, then you need to do that before you complete your merge function. So let's get into it and start merging some tracks. First of all, we're gonna merge these four drum tracks into one stereo audio track. Let's just play these drums now so you can hear how they sound. So there you go, we've got our kick drum, we've got some hi-hats, we've got some snares, we've got some cymbals, and they're all on different tracks because it's just easier to record that way. But now that my track is recorded, I don't need all those individual tracks. So let's merge. We're gonna tap on the icon here, hit the merge button, and now we can tick over here on the left, all four tracks, and then we're gonna tap on merge up here in the top right. It will go away and merge those tracks into this one new track. So now if we solo this track and play back, you can see that we have all of those drums merged down into one stereo track. Very cool. Okay, let's try this again with another couple of tracks. We have a clave and a conga track here, and if we play these back, they sound like this. And if you're listening on stereo, you'll notice that the clave is over on the left and the conga is over on the right. So we've got these panned hard left and hard right. And the reason I've done that is to show you the power of merge is that it will keep your stereo image. So when we merge these tracks, it will put the clave over on the left and it will put the conga on the right. Let's see how it does that now. So we'll tap on one of the tracks, we'll tap again, we'll tap on merge and let's select both of these tracks and hit the merge button. And like magic, we now have these two tracks here on the same track. And if we play these back, keep an eye on the VU meter if you're not listening in stereo or listen to your stereo image, and you'll hear that one is on the left and one is on the right still. Very cool. So not only can we merge tracks, but we merge them into a stereo track, which means we get to keep that. So if you've got things like percussion that spread from left to right, you've got four, five, six tracks, you can pan them to the position that you want, then merge them into one stereo track, and that panning will remain in your stereo track. Very cool. Okay, let's go with one more example here. We have some backing tracks here. So we've got one, two backing tracks. If we solo these out and play them, they sound like this. There you go, so there's our two backing tracks. Now the first thing you might notice here is the volume of these is a little bit low, so I'm gonna show you a cool trick using Merge that I have shown before in another separate video, but what we're gonna do first is merge this track with itself to normalize the volume. Normalizing just means that the volume is gonna become standard, it's gonna raise the volume, it doesn't do compression, it doesn't do limiting, it just increases the volume, so that this waveform that we currently can't see, we're gonna be able to see. Let's do that now, we're gonna tap on the icon there, tap on merge. And now, instead of selecting any other track, we're just gonna leave this track selected and hit merge. 
There you go. You can see it's brought the track down to the bottom here and it's increased our waveform. Let's do that again with our second track. Tap, tap merge, leave just that one track selected, hit merge again. And there you go. Our audio track is down here. Now keep in mind that it has now put these on a clean audio recorder track. So it doesn't have all of the settings you had before. So what I would suggest is before you do this, have the audio set to clean and then bring it across and then you can adjust your EQ and your settings here. Otherwise, what you can do is get all your settings correct to begin with, like I have done, and then bring them across into a clean track and they'll bring across any of the effects that you've added to those tracks already. The other thing that I want to tell you here is the panning is reset to the middle. So both of these tracks are now panned to the middle, even though I had them originally panned one side or the other. However, what you can see in the waveform here is that one is more to the left and one is more to the right, because that is where I originally had them panned. So a tip that I probably should have done here is center panned these so that I could then pan them left and right. But instead, I'm just going to leave them here in the center, but you'll still hear that one will be slightly to the left, one will be slightly to the right. So one final step, let's merge these two together. We'll tap again, we'll tap merge, we'll select both tracks and we'll hit the merge button. And there we go, there are our vocals. Let's solo and play these back. So there you go, much louder. So we will need to drop those down in the mix just so that they're not overpowering because they've now been normalized as well. So there you go, we have taken 10 tracks and using the power of the merge function, we've turned them into just three tracks. So a couple of things to keep in mind there, back up your track, make sure that your processing is either done before or you're transferring them as a clean audio sound. Keep an eye on the panning, whether it's panned left, right or center, because it will take that panning across into your stereo track. If you want that, great. If you don't, keep them center panned. So I hope you found this useful, a great feature for when you're running out of tracks or you just want to clean up your tracks here in GarageBand iOS. Now let's take a listen to this completed track. And there you have it, the very handy, very useful merge function here in GarageBand iOS on your iPhone or your iPad. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave those down below, and I will see you on the next video. Did you know that I have 30 plus GarageBand Quick Jam videos right here on the channel? You can check the links down below to check those out. You can also subscribe to the channel over here by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon, or head over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.